am I wrong for not taking down my video that was a gift from my best man? I have a sister that's six years older than me. My parents for years cancel on me last minute because of my sister. I have a basketball game. Oops, sorry, sister doesn't feel like going out. I'm graduating. Oops, sorry, sister had a bad day at work. They have missed both major and smaller events in my life because of her meltdowns. I met the love of my life. We decided to tie the knot. From the beginning, I told my parents how I'm worried my sister will ruin another special moment in my life. My mom told me over and over again that it would not happen. The day of my wedding, I received a voicemail from my mom saying they couldn't come because my sister's dog was sick and she was upset. I was hurt. My best man, however, is a jokester. He took my phone, then went to my fiance and asked if he could post a video of our wedding as a gift. On social media, she loved his idea. I had no idea about it until I came home. Our honeymoon was at a lakeside cabin, no cell service. The post caption was, my best friend, he's an amazing person even if his parents never showed up for him. The video was still pictures of us next to her parents, me on the dance floor cutting the cake, where you would normally see both parents in wedding pictures. The sound behind the video was my mom's voicemail explaining how they couldn't come because my sister's dog was sick. I came home a week later to hundreds of messages, family members from both sides insisting I take it down. I was told my sister hasn't stopped crying. My mom was refusing to leave the house. I may be the asshole here. I didn't take it down when I got my messages. I didn't call my family back right away. I waited until my vacation time was over at work and I enjoyed my time with my wife in our new home before I contacted anyone. My dad told me to take down the video. It was just a bad night for them, that they will make it up to my wife and me for not coming. My reply was, exactly how do you plan to make up my wedding? It's a once in a lifetime thing. You chose to ignore my feelings on the whole matter. Then he just repeated he will make it up to me. I told him I would take down the video only when he made up missing my wedding. Flustered, we both hung up the phone before we said things we shouldn't have. Am I the asshole here? I we hired a housekeeper that comes over several times a week to get the house clean since my husband and I are busy with work. We have two kids, Jeremy 16 and Raya 14. Now Jeremy's a jokester. He likes pulling pranks on everyone in the house and that included the housekeeper. He did stuff like throw a purse and hide her wallet and he got punished for it and told not to do it again because our housekeeper almost quit and we didn't want that. A few days ago, I got a call from Jeremy while he was having friends over to tell me that he saw the housekeeper sneak one of my jewelry into her purse and asked me to come home immediately. I freaked out and tried to call my husband but he didn't pick up. I went home and I was mad and I talked to the housekeeper and she denied putting anything in her purse. That's when I demanded to see her purse and my jewelry was in fact there. The housekeeper started swearing on her children that she didn't put it in there and that she had no idea how it got in there. I believed her and figured that Jeremy had something to do with it given his history. I switched my attention towards him and had him explain to me exactly how he saw our housekeeper do it. He told me what he saw, but a friend of his came forward and said that he saw Jeremy put the jewelry inside the lady's purse and was trying to get her in trouble. Jeremy yelled at his friend and then told me it was just one of his pranks, but I was furious. I kicked the rest of his friends who covered for him out and I punished him hard and apologized to the housekeeper. However, my husband reacted unexpectedly after he heard and said that I was wrong for choosing to believe the housekeeper over our son, even though there was a witness, but he said his friend must have said this to get him in trouble or because the housekeeper paid him to side with her, which was shockingly absurd of him to say. He said I wasn't being a good mother and my first instinct is to always believe my son in whatever he says and never question him in front of his friends like that. I'm honestly so confused. Did I mess up? Am I the asshole for believing my housekeeper over my son? For some weird reason, my mother-in-law really wants to go into our bedroom whenever she comes over. On one occasion, I followed her as she went upstairs. I was going to get something for my child as the bedrooms are upstairs, and she walked past the bedroom on the main floor and up the stairs behind it. She didn't hear me, and I caught her walking straight into my room and rifling through bills on my dresser. She denied snooping, even though I had just watched her do it, and she said she was just going to use our bathroom because she couldn't find the other ones. She walked right past the one on the main floor and the other one in the upstairs hallway to go into our bedroom. Since that happened, I installed an exterior doorknob that requires a key on our bedroom door and one to the door to our office and spare bedroom. However, she's still always forgetting where the bathroom is and trying the bedroom and office door. This really ticks me off. My husband says that I just get annoyed at this because everything she does drives me crazy and since we've put locks on the rooms we don't want her in, there really isn't a problem anymore. Well, over the holidays, we had my in-laws over for dinner and before they came, I was searching for the bedroom keys. We hadn't used them in a while since we only locked the doors when my mother-in-law comes over. My husband told me that we didn't need to lock the doors since she wouldn't try to get into the rooms and I insisted that she would because she loves to snoop. We went back and forth and decided to cover the doorknobs in super fine glitter to see if she'd try them. I did this once before but my husband didn't believe me about that snooping to prove that she'd been in the rooms. Last time, she ignored the glitter and we didn't say anything about it, but then my husband couldn't deny that she tried to snoop. So this time, I covered the knobs in glitter and for the office went a touch further and ripped a little folder of glitter over the door to the office before the in-laws came over. I left it one side unlocked, French doors, and it was set so if you walked into the room, you would get covered in glitter. My husband goes out of his way to show his mom the main floor bathroom when they got here and specifically asks his parents and sister not to go upstairs. There's a baby gate.
late so the kids can't get upstairs either. Well, guess who had to go to the bathroom and got covered in glitter and had it all over their hands and hair? She completely lost it and started screaming at me so I yelled back and now my husband is saying I went too far and that I'm an asshole. My mother-in-law also says that I'm an asshole, but my sister-in-law says I didn't do anything wrong and my mother-in-law deserved it for snooping. My father-in-law is Switzerland. Apparently her car is ruined now too because it's covered in glitter that she can't get cleaned up. Am I the asshole for setting a glitter trap to catch my mother-in-law trying to snoop? Story time about when I messed up by pushing my girlfriend too hard. My girlfriend and I were laying down on our bed and watching funny videos on YouTube. She was laughing hysterically at quite a few. So much so that it caused her to let one rip. Far. More than once. This was obviously not intentional, which made it both hilarious and adorable. After the third time it happened, she said, I'm really gassy. I took this opportunity to quickly press down on her stomach, which then almost immediately triggered an enormous fart. I completely lost it. It was so funny and I could feel the vibration as the pressure caused her to fart again and again. I couldn't help myself and kept doing it. This is how I fucked up. After a few successful attempts, I tried for her final push. I wanted to end it on a huge one. It was so funny and she was laughing so much. I pushed down and nothing. So I pushed again, but this time much harder. Now this is where I should know that she was wearing nothing but one of my t-shirts. Hence, she had no underwear on. On the last push, my girlfriend sharded. She sharded and then she had severe follow through all over our bed. It went from pure joy to absolute chaos and horror. She was just staring at me blankly like she had just killed someone. I didn't know what to do as she went quiet, my legs covered in shit. I stared right back, gently held her hands and walked her to the shower without looking back at our bed and down on my legs. We didn't say a word. I cleaned up my legs before leaving her to clean herself up. She made me promise not to go into the bedroom. I adore her completely. She looked so scared when I left her in the shower and wouldn't let me clean up despite my offering to do so. Eventually, I walked in the bedroom to help. She was so apologetic, although I assured her that it's completely fine. She burst out laughing when I said to her, Don't worry, you'll always be my little shit. Am I wrong for telling my niece the family secret? I, 35 female, had two older sisters growing up, Jane and Kim. Kim got sick and died, but not before giving birth to my niece, Laura, 18 female. It had been a year after Kim's passing when Jane and Laura's dad, Tom, 42 male, confessed to dating and were now engaged. Bro, I don't understand. I never understand sisters going after the same guy after especially after they have a baby together that's so weird that's so nasty i accused them of cheating jane and tom explained that this wasn't something they had planned but there was no cheating and knew that kim would want them to be happy yeah but not with each other <laughs> you can be happy with someone else convenient since she's you know dead i did not attend the wedding and was super upset at how everyone else was so accepting of the relationship but the thing that hurt me the most was how Jane and Tom intended to completely erase Kim and Laura's life. She was barely two when Kim died and they decided it would be better if Laura thought Jane was her mother in every sense of the word after the adoption was finalized. Tom got rid of any items that would suggest he and Kim were ever in a relationship and made his family swear to never tell Laura the truth. Jane expected everyone on our side of the family to do the same, but I refused and as such, I was denied access to Laura. It hurt, but when I thought about all those times, Kim cried knowing that she wouldn't live long enough to see Laura grow up, there was just no way I could honor the lie. They even had Laura's name illegally changed to something that Jane liked as Kim picked out Laura's first name. I distanced myself from my family over time over this, but my parents always tried to get us to reconcile. Citing that they didn't like this arrangement either, but accepting it was better than not being a part of Laura's life at all. I just couldn't do it. Growing up, Laura had known of me, but we never really interacted. Apparently, she's interested in studying a field that I work in and reached out to me through social media. The last time I saw her, she was seven, and I started to tear up about how much she looked like him. We would talk from time to time, and eventually Laura asked why I wasn't around. I tried to keep it vague, but Laura knew that there was more to the story as I didn't seem like the person I was described to be. If we had been talking through DMs like before, I probably wouldn't have done it, but we were video chatting and something about looking directly into her eyes broke me and I confessed to everything. Before Kim died, she and I made a series of videos for Laura to watch at her big moments and I told her that if she ever wanted to watch any of them, I'd send them. Laura asked me to send some and then I heard nothing from her for days. Recently, I got a call from an enraged Jane and Tom berating me for ruining their family. After Laura watched some of the videos, she confronted my parents who confirmed everything. Laura has moved out and currently not speaking to anyone and no one knows where she is right now. Everyone is angry at me. So am I the asshole? Let me Am I wrong for leaving a trip early because of my girlfriend's prank? I, 20 male, had a girlfriend, 20 female of eight months who I recently went on what was supposed to be a week-long beach trip in Queensland with her friends and family. She had been planning this trip for a long time and was looking forward to it, especially since I'd get to know them all. On the third day, we planned to go river floating. When we got there, I was looking through my bag before I went to change and I couldn't find my trunks. I instead found a new navy blue pair. When I told her this, she replied with, oh yeah, that's the extra one I packed in case you lost yours. I thought this was thoughtful. 
I changed into them and we all headed down towards the river. We all got into our tubes and started floating off. About three minutes in, I feel my suit getting baggier and I even noticed a piece is falling off. I was disappointed that they were a cheap pair, but I kept going. Once we hit the rapids, it got real though. I felt a sudden rush of cold water and I noticed that my trunks had been torn clear off by the water. I stood up covering myself with just the last piece. Everyone else, about 15 of our friends and family, started to laugh. I was absolutely horrified. One of my biggest fears is being naked in public, and now I was completely nude with no way to get back. I can't tell you how trapped and humiliated I felt. I had to spend the rest of the day with the water up to my shoulders, feeling awkward and embarrassed the whole time. Whenever we were in shallow water, I was forced to stand up and walk exposed in front of them. They weren't prudish either. Her friends and parents made jokes and comments on my body as we went. Her young cousins made sure to comment on the shape and size of my junk when I couldn't cover myself also. When we got to the beach, I had to run covering myself back to my towel. My day was completely ruined. I felt humiliated and angry. When we got back to our room, I was back into clothes trying to forget the day when my girlfriend comes in giggling to herself. She asked me if I liked the new swim trunks, and when I asked what she meant, she told me that she had ordered a prank dissolving pair in lounge and replaced the other one with it. I was absolutely livid. She had purposely exposed and violated me because she thought it would be a good laugh. She even made sure not to pack another pair or towel. I started yelling and she told me to calm down, saying that it was only a joke. I left that night, and I didn't call her the next day. She called screaming at me, acting like I was the one who wronged her, saying that she had worked so hard for this trip and I was being immature. But I didn't want to be around someone who would humiliate me, especially considering that her family and friends would be there. I can understand that I ruined the trip for her, but it feels like